Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Last episode, we cleared out the city of Londonborough and finished the Alexander Graham Bell mission involving voltaic bombs. And I do believe that is the last upgrade item you get. There's no more special items or devices or <coughs> weapons or anything like that there is to get anymore. So one could say that the tutorials throughout the game has officially ended. We have conquered City of London 100%. first mission we'll be doing is Sequence 5, A Room with a View. I think, in general, I'll start out with EV missions and then move on to Jacob missions after that. Mr. Fry, you are peaceful. You'll feel my fist if you keep on. Even in death, he's threatening me. You have to respect that. It's up there. All right. Now, despite talking a bit about them in the last episode, I don't think I really gave a proper review or opinion on them. Personally, I don't really use the voltaic bombs like at all, unless it's one of the required things for the optional objectives. And the reason for that is because what purpose do they really serve that couldn't better be done with either the throwing knives or the smoke bombs, both of which are overpowered in their own rights. You can hold plenty of each of them. You can hold four smoke bombs and I don't think my uh, pouch is upgraded. Let me just see real quick. Alright, so I suppose it is, and I'm wrong. But even then, 4 is more than enough for most situations, especially if you're playing stealthily and aren't running into areas with the enemies. Of course, you can hold plenty of throwing knives, especially as Eevee. So the throwing knives are able to efficiently kill enemies with the added bonus that won't also kill off random NPCs. I love how the kid lives, and by I love how he lives, I mean I fucking hate that crap in video games. It doesn't kill off random NPCs and risk you being kicked out from the mission because a few randos were, away, were way too close to the area of effect. And the smoke bombs are able to mask your entrance, even if the enemies are already aggroed. Them being in that smoke bomb tends to disable them to the point where they can't efficiently fight back. That's my reasoning for not really using the smoke bombs at all. I just don't think there's points in the missions, be it the optional ones, be it the burrow clearing sections, be it any of it, where it couldn't better be handled by the knives or the smoke bombs. But that's just, you know, sort of my gameplay style. If you have any idea where these would best be used, where they become incredibly efficient, let me know, but they damage the enemy, sure, but again, just use a knife. Most of the time, you just want the enemy dead. Like, maybe setting up the missions where you have to get one person to kill another, I think I did all those. Anyways, sequence 5, a room with a view.
Clues lead Evie closer to the Peace of Eden. Like how the game automatically switches out between Jacob and Evie, just so you don't have to do it yourself and waste time. It gets to the point. I would like to thank our esteemed guests. So the hints you found in the Kenway House lead to the monument. What a wonderful use of your time following me around asking obvious questions. Well, since Henry isn't here, I thought you might enjoy the company. I don't require any company, and Mr. Green is following up on some leads of his own. Oh, yes, Mr. Green. That's a fascinating idea. Oh, please, Mr. Green, come and take a look at this book and stand oh so close to me, Mr. Green. I do not. Well, perhaps you have nothing better to do, but I'm busy protecting the assassins. Are you really? What was it Father used to say? Don't allow personal feelings to compromise the mission. Precisely. Anyway, I'm off. If I find any more wild geese for you to chase, I'll be in touch. It'll be ever more pleasant for your absence. I like how even Jacob is aware how dumb this subplot is. Alright, so we need to examine the base of the monument, but we can't be in the area of the monument. But just so happens... That we have an overpowered stealth item. This guy should forget him about me eventually. Although it is a bit silly that just as I said the item was overpowered, he immediately aggroed. Not sure if I was in the area or not. We are gathered here at the monument to the Great Fire. In an effort to ensure so great a tragedy will never happen again. I would like to thank our esteemed okay. guests, the right honorable. Yeah, like that. Just leave them alone down there. Actually, they'll probably go for the roofs. We'll just reverse our way over here. And I guess they're able to see me up here. Alright, so a bit of a screw up. I'll admit, not the cleanest run on my part. And I even foolishly contradict myself a bit by running out of smoke bombs right here. Guys are very, a very good eyesight. <clears throat> well, this will actually be pretty easy. My losers. And I really want to climb up here. They are about to shoot me. It's also nice that you don't automatically fall off when taking a bullet here. Alright. This looks familiar. What a convoluted puzzle this is, huh? be a little bit easier if the game was, you know, like other, had a lot of the sort of platforming mechanics similar to, say, Mario Odyssey, where if you're in the air, a shadow directly underneath you will show exactly where you are relative to the ground. Because I am still at a bad angle here. Isn't so much wrestling with skill as you are. Oh crap. As you are wrestling with control. There we go. Oh, 
I like how these stupid civilians block my way while I'm in the forbidden zone. getting her to jump down. It's mainly based on angling your rope right more than anything else. It looks easy, but because it's kind of a bit of a chore to figure out that angling from you know that height and where Evie is relative to the haystack, it, uh, it can be a bit annoying. Anyways, we need to get to the vaguely familiar area, and because this is Assassin's Creed, just use Eagle Vision and Eevee will automatically find the thing. get actually a little puzzle where we have to arrange these cog wheels. So that the symbol on this side matches the symbol on this side. It's kind of convenient that Eevee just stored all of these pieces, all the necessary pieces on her. Right, let's actually I think it'd be more efficient just working backwards. So then we have the 69 or whatever, 67 I guess it's supposed to be. One can be a little bit slow, that's for sure. It's not even a particularly difficult puzzle, especially when you work backwards. I made that a little bit more tedious and challenging than it needed to be. Alright, so you see what we did? We went to the base of the monument and got the thing. Then we went to the top of the monument and got the other thing. Then we went to St. Peter's Basilica here and did the thing. And then we shall go into that room and hopefully collect the thing. I have no idea why this lantern of all things is possible clip through, but alright. You think the rope launcher would actually be able to reach that distance? It doesn't look too too far between uh, each po possible point. No further than say the structures in the Big Ben area. Trying to find an area to climb up or rope launch up. I guess not. I'll just do this the old-fashioned way like our ancestors used to. Alright, screw the old-fashioned way. Alright, this next optional challenge up here can be 
a little bit more tricky than some of the other ones you'd find. Just make sure to appreciate that B button. Designated enter. The key to the vault and the shroud. Good day, Miss Fry. I'll take that. You shroud to cement your own power. But what if you cannot control him? And why do you want the Shroud? Merely to keep the Templars from having it. How like an assassin. To hold the power of eternal life, and yet be too afraid to use it. Eternal life? Is that what you think the Shroud offers? What I think is no longer your concern. So we need to counter all of her strikes. So you know, just take a few hits on her, and then keep pressing that B button. Best not to get greedy. It's a bit like the fight between Arno and... Ow, that barely did any damage too. I was gonna say it's a bit like the, for the, the fight between Arno and Bellic in Assassin's Creed Unity. Alright, come on Lucy, do your mission. There you go, good girl. She did it. She killed the target standing around doing absolutely nothing. Let's try this again, and with a bit better timing. Not dead. I complete the challenge. Performed a leap of faith in the haystack while on a zip line and countered all of Lucy's strikes. How is she not dead? Like, she doesn't have a rope launcher or anything. She doesn't have any hay down there. And she doesn't exactly seem like the kind of person who would have the skills of an assassin. At least we've never seen her demonstrate this. In fact, how'd she even end up here? That's still a bit of a climb, and even though Lucy's outfit is a little bit more practical than the average dress in the Victorian era. It's, uh... That still seems pretty bad to climb up in. I mean, at least Evie here is wearing pants. Well, in any case, we... Beat Lucy Thorn. Is this stealthy? Let's 
head on out. <laughs> Move, bitch. All right. Any other EV missions? Yep. Lady with the lamp, which is actually the mission I wanted to upgrade her carriage abilities for. This is just a mess of trouble, Brooks. Is everything all right? They should be asking you that, Evie. I guess everything is all right. Never disband them now. I can see why the game wanted me to take that direction now. But as I was saying, this is a mission I wanted to upgrade Evie's carriage driving for. directions. I mean, these parts aren't so bad. You just hold right trigger and forward and EV will automatically jump to these various boxes and poles sticking out of the water. this and, you know, let's, let's just do what the game wants me to do this time no getting fancy no trying to find shortcuts just a nice stroll through South Park although I think the place we're heading is Lambeth those lighters not to get upset about me tapping into their carriage there. Yeah, it's in Lambeth. This mission is actually going to present a, you know, a bit of a plot hole and further rant on the story of the game and its disconnect from the opening cutscene of the game where Henry is writing a letter. But I'll finish the mission first before delving into such matters. I swear I just... We can run the rest of the way. Why are these people just casually hanging outside a mental asylum? Now of course it'd be on the other side of the building. You just don't want to make it easy, do you? Lady with the Lamp. Evie visits Lambeth after Jacob's assassination of Dr. Elliotson. Since I did the other mission first, it's a bit of a plot hole why he or she didn't mention it. Miss Fry, what a pleasant surprise. Hello, Clara. I was just going to check on Lambeth since the asylum's closing. What brings you here? The children in my cabin fallen ill. The usual tonics aren't working. A cane, too. 
Are you certain you're feeling all right? Of course. I am, miss. Cara! Is there a doctor nearby? Bring her inside. She simply collapsed? Yes, she said the others took tonic, but it didn't work. I should think not. Ever since Elliotson was murdered, the district has been overrun with counterfeit tonics. <laughs> this one needs proper care. But without the appropriate medication, she and the others will quickly decline. What do you need? I need supplies. Plenty of them. And medicine. Some of the less common ingredients are being stolen and sold at auction. I'd be happy to help. Here's the list. Miss Fry. Evie Fry. I'm Miss Nightingale. How do you do? Please hurry. We don't have much time. Very convenient of Miss Nightingale to be essentially waiting outside of the doors or just behind the doors Slow there down. for Evie to call for a medic. Florence Nightingale was another historical figure as some of you might know. She's been coined as the Lady of the Lamb for her work on the battlefield, keep attending to the injured. But the thing I most know her for is her work in sanitation where she tried to figure out like some of the things that were causing people to get sick and discover that you know just simply cleaning up the city a little bit, not having so much grime and crap would do wonders. This is an interesting mission in the sense it's one of the few ones, if not the only one, that has a time limit on it. Steel. Because I keep accident. Start. It just made more difficult than need to be. Oh, off we go. Now I have to locate a guy called the pharmacist. I uh, died in the last mission. I tried using a smoke bomb to daze him, but that just alerted everyone. Ironics that smoke bomb is supposed to be stealth item, but you can use it incorrectly like I did. Come on! Easy now. You have to kill these two here. Even mad. I, that was a really nice little teleportation by Evie there. That could have gone a lot better. That's all I have to say.
kind of odd that the police were alerted in that area there what am I doing with a smoke bomb even though it's not a restricted area the cops are usually lenient with your tomfoolery I guess they needed to be a little bit more aggressive for this mission now we have only Four minutes left, less than that even. Despite having seven minutes in the last time. Who's right? I can't thank you enough. These supplies are meant for Miss Nightingale. I'm here to collect them. And they're already loaded on the cart. Please take them. Get up! You mean that cart? Yes. Of course it is. Please be careful. Some of those items are fragile. Alright, so now we need to run over and collect those items. Of course we're going to get in the small fast cart. Check the cart in less than a minute. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I swear this ruins my chances for that optional achievement. That could have been so stupid. Alright, so we need to hightail it back to Clara, which is pretty easy since we're right by the asylum. And thankfully there's no, like, penalty for damaging the cart. Well, that would have been so stupid. <laughs> a moment too soon. I hope you brought the medication I requested. How is she? She will recover. Ellie, the children. Thanks to you, we can distribute authentic medicine now. But is that a permanent solution? I will petition to have regulations put in place. Lambeth is in your debt. It takes a long time to change things. But I'm not going anywhere, Miss Fry. We get the schematic for increased medical efficacy, which is a fitting mission for that, the one mission with Florence Nightingale. And might as well get it now. If I can. Yeah, the money. And the resources, of course. And there we go, we're all topped off of that. The only thing not really topped off with are these ones that we can't be until we get schematics and blueprints. And I think that is the last EV mission. We have a Jacob one there. There's our train hideout. Alright, this is a, a good time to talk about, or should I say bitch about, well, he's gone. Should do your job, Rooks. A uh, bitch about some plot holes in the game. Go so, on. Dr. Elliotson was the one responsible for the soothing syrup, which is an opiate laden fraud medicine that basically turns people into zombies, shuts their brains off, makes them invalid. It. It's a scourge on the streets of London. Jacob, being an assassin, kills go. the Templar responsible for this, being Dr. Elliotson. That somehow Get topples on. the entire medical industry. 
John Elliotson was not a major figure in the world of medicine. And in fact, in the game itself, he is known to the Londoners, or at least to Charles Darwin, as a disgraced heart specialist because he started dabbling in ph phrenology and mesmerism. It quote unquote ruined his career. And yet, he is a key part of the entire medical industry of London. Even though all he peddled was pure shit. The Lambeth Asylum is close is closing, sure, but that's an asylum. It's not a hospital. You put the crazy people there. Not the injured, not the sick. It just seems like such a disconnect. You kill this fraud, or Jacob kills his fraud, and suddenly crap medicine is all over the streets, even though it was already all over the streets. That's what we stopped. We prevented Sterix soothing syrup from being the only common medicine available. That should reasonably lead to more of a market for legitimate medicines, especially since the person heading the medical industry, apparently, who was a total fraud, is dead. And the issue, another issue, is that wouldn't he just be quickly replaced? And this is going to be an issue for all the other times Jacob apparently fucks up all of London's industries. Like, the entire point of an industry, or one of the big, not the point of an industry, but one of the big advantages of an industry is that it's able to be sorted out if somebody dies, or is fired, or is just out of commission. When Steve Jobs died, Apple didn't. When Henry Ford died, Ford Motors didn't. <laughs> Whatever companies are peddling out this medicine shouldn't die just because a total fraud who happened to be heading it did. And you'd think that after centuries of having their leading figures get stabbed to death by these assassins, the Templars would be far more prepared for these uneventful outcomes than they are now, where, you know, the entire infrastructure of the world's most powerful city can just go kaput. I mean, seriously, that guy died just slipping on some wet cobblestone here and cracked his skull open. The same effect would happen. This really isn't in so much an issue of Jacob being reckless as it is an issue of the Templars just not having proper preparations. Uh, I just think the game handled the situation very poorly. And it's going to happen again and again. I'm just going to repeat this point again and again. So the final point I want to mention now, a oh, nice carrot chop there, buddy, was at the starting cutscene with Henry Green, like he is urging the assassins to send people over to help him kill the Templars. He doesn't really mention the Peace of Eden. He's you talking know. about Steric. He's talking about the Blighters. He's talking about the fact that these people, the Templars, have a grasp over London and are looking to expand their reach to the rest of the world, they need to be dealt with today. And that's exactly what Jacob is doing. He's dealing with the Templars in the way assassins have been doing it for over a thousand years now. It's just, you know, it seems like the start of the game and near the end of the game was written by different people. The people who wrote the start of the game wanted uh, 
Charles Dickens to have a more important role where he's sort of the guy you need to keep that relation in your pocket. He knows everyone in the city after all. That'll be helpful. I am uh I'm not even pressing the right button. I'm a dumbass. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you. No problem, Pally. I start of the game, you know, Charles Dickens is a really important uh, figure in Victorian history. You no, know, you should keep an eye on him, you know, foster a bit of a relationship with him. Because he knows everyone in the city, and that's useful. And then he's only side quests, not part of the main story. And his side quests don't involve knowing everyone in the city. They're the Fry Twins playing Ghost Hunters. And while they're alright side quests, it seems sort of odd that those would be the side quests you come across with Dickens who is introduced as a character who's supposed to say Noah guy. We are sort of even contradicted, I think I already mentioned this, in the very next sort of area or scene where you're they're in Henry's shop, where Henry has all these has all these papers and drawings of people in the city. He's like, oh, that's Clara. She's uh, one of the urchins who can get kids to serve as spies for you. And that's Albert Line. If you get him, the police will ignore you, even though the police didn't ignore me as a result of helping Albert Line. They mostly ignore me as a result of a skill tree thing, but I guess that's beside the point. That would shoot me or am I imagining things? The plot of the game needs a bit of work, basically, and this whole thing about Jacob toppling these industries by killing a single person who is an overall negative effect on these industries is a bit weak. We've already got a ton of stories where, you know, the headstrong, reckless assassin is causing way too much trouble for people. It's ruining things. I mean, we had it with Edward, we had it with Arno, and now we have it with Jacob. It would be nice if it was a plot where, say, a more reserved and professional, professional and single-minded assassin ends up causing trouble through her inaction. But no, Evie's you know, on a quest for a magical cloth and Henry Green's dick. It just seems like a waste of a perfectly good plot for one we've already played through in the games before. I don't know how exactly you can really topple Edward Kenway's lesson, since it sort of cost him this friendship he formed with all these other characters. Like, he went to the absolute rock bottom before he realized that he needs to change his attitude and his methods. Be on your guard. Seriously? There I go. Thanks. It's not useful, but you know, at least he gives me something. What about here? Is this another kid? Alright. Please be more useful than your friend. Here, you might need this. Well done. Kids these days. Well, I 
I guess that should wrap up this episode since I plan on doing the Eevee and the Jake mission separately. I hope you enjoyed the little rant that I gave that I gave about the sort of plot holes of the series. And no, this is actually I think where we met Darwin. Yeah, it's like right here. And Jacob would have jumped out of there, I think. Nice little blast from the past. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the little rant and the episode in general. Hope I gave you something to think about and otherwise entertained you. The problem with having, you know, more optional items like the Voltaic Bombs and Health Packs and whatnot means that the kids will be more likely to give you those rather than the uh, money and resources you'd much rather have. Anyways, uh, take care.